protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Good luck, touch gloves. So here we go from Mariaki Arena in Tokyo, Japan. Joe Tessitore and Tim Bradley on the call to determine the first undisputed bantamweight champion in boxing's four felt era. Now you in a way and Paul Butler. You have to go back to when Inouye was in high school, Tim, when he took part in an amateur tournament, the All Japan Tournament, for the last time he lost a fight. He turned pro immediately after that. Here we are now, 23 fights and 20 knockouts later, including now this, his 19th straight world championship fight. Tess for Butler, he's naturally left-handed and he fights from the orthodox stance. And I expect him to be heavy on his jab. Heavy, stand defensive responsible, so that way he doesn't get caught early. And limit the 50-50 exchanges against anyway. And for anyway, it's all about pressure and cutting off the ring. And I expect him to go down to the body of Butler to bring those hands down and eventually find that kill shot up top. Speaking of jabs, you're seeing steady jab from Inouye early on. He averages landing nearly nine jabs per round, and that is number two among all active fighters. That is double the bantamweight average, first two-punch combination of significance from Inouye. See, Inouye, Butler was trying to exit Inouye through the right hand, caught him where he was moving, forced Butler to his left hand, and caught him with the left hook. There's Inouye trying to corral him with that jab. Butler, steady mover, high guard defense. Butler's now trying to use feint and lateral movement to throw off Inouye's timing. He's doing right by staying defensively sound and not opening up right away. Three punch combination from Inouye. Now Butler takes a step forward for a moment. Inouye comes back with a right hand behind the jab. That was caught by Butler. A defensive position of Butler. Inouye touches him to the body, put the jab to the body, came with the right hand, and finished with the left to the body. Butler's got to get on his jab, Tess. It's the only way. He has to gain some sort of respect. He's allowing anyway just pass that threshold without giving him anything in response. And even though some of these punches, many of these punches are hitting the gloves of Butler, you can hear the thud. And Inouye has the power to punch through the defensive prowess of Butler. You know, I think this was a quintal central round for anyway. You know, he pressed forward, landing that jab, starting with the jab downstairs, working and looking for the angles and the shots around the elbows of Butler. Butler's playing, span, you know, playing defensively sound right now. You know, he's playing with his defense. He's, he's keeping his hands high, and he's not allowing anyway to get a clean punch on him. Tess, I'm okay with that at the moment. I'm okay with that. You know, he's outgunned. He knows it. He Joseph Gallagher, trainer for Paul Butler. WBO Bantamweight World Champion comes from Cheshire, England and goes to the other side of the world to take on this challenge against the monster. Round number two. There's a the right hand to the body from Inouye. Inouye doing exactly what I was saying. He's going down to the body trying to open up Butler. Butler has to find some way to gain some sort of respect, to get respect from Inouye. Comes forward with a double jab, does Butler. 
Like Boy probing with that jab, including often going to the body with it. Waiting on Butler for a moment. Not enough offense from Butler at all. Not enough jabs, not enough combinations just yet. He's still comfortable right now, still protecting himself. He fears that power of any way. Or double jab that time, a five punch combination. He went double jab, right hand, left hand to the body. He has landed three lefts to the body in that last sequence. Test, nice slip inside right there from Butler to land his own body shot on anyway. And Butler comes back with a right hand up top before going with the high guard again. Now moving to his left, he's got to be careful of that right hand of Inoue. Inoue taking those small steps just to corral Butler, always keeping him in range. There's a right hand and a left hand to the body that backed it up. He's been finishing consistently with that left hand to the body on the combinations, Timmy. Yes, he has. He's one of the best combination punchers in boxing. Always balanced. In a way, steady work with the jab. Always setting the table, creating the opportunity for offense. Now you see the head movement. Something he has taken great pride in. Remember, he took that mini camp trip to the wild card gym in California. Said he wanted to see various styles and work on his defense. You saw a glimpse of it there with the upper body movement. Tess, 100% of fighters need to work on their defense. Right hand over the top from Inouye. Partially blocked by Butler. A lot of foot fangs from Butler, but no, no probing jab, nothing in Just front of him. Just not enough offense, Timmy, to keep in a way off. And that is right. And two lefts to the body. Good body work in round number two by Naia in a way. Vicious body work. I got to tell you guys in the past, you see Inouye throwing where Butler's moving to to cut him off, to pin him on the ropes. Butler keeping that high guard. Inouye is searching for those holes around the high guard. When opponent has the high guard, you can split the guard. You can come underneath the guard. You can come around the guard. And Inouye's doing a great job right here with his defense that he says that he's been working on to improve. It's interesting when he detailed that trip to the wild card gym, Freddie Roach's wild card boxing club, and he was asked about the experience. He said, listen, I'm not used to outsiders watching me train. He said, you go there and you have sparring partners bringing family members and friends. You have yes. people showing up to watch you train. But he said, it actually made me stronger. In a way, said it forced me to focus and lock in even more because I was taken out of my comfort zone by being in that setting, Timmy. Tess, that's, that's the magic word, being out of your comfort zone. A lot of fighters like to feel comfortable. No, you need to feel uncomfortable. Get, you need to get your, yourself prepared for those type of situations. Opens up this third round with a combination. Pumbles in that corner and desperately needs to get out. He has that left hand up, but in a way, is pounding him with right hands Test. and mixing in the left to the body as well. Tess, do you hear the punches? That is the one thing with in a way that is most obvious. You hear the power, you don't just see it. Two punch combination again, working behind that jab. Look at the space between. Butler's not, not probing, not doing anything else to occupy that space in front of him. He's just allowing Inoue to just walk straight in and do whatever he wants against him. And Inoue always maintains that range to be in position. Look at the footwork and those small steps. Anytime Butler moves laterally like you see him doing right now, Inoue is constantly staying on him as if they are tied at the waist with a rope. Oh, he's in a ready position. 
Tess, I'm just waiting on that teeter-totter combination. The uppercut, right uppercut, left hook behind. Now explain to people when you say that. You call it a teeter-totter. And Butler finally lets his hands go as in a way covers up for a moment. Best work that Butler's had comes here in round number three. But what you describe is that teeter-totter, the ability to throw punches and generate torque, bringing back the offhand to create more power. No, the teeter-totter combination is, is the right uppercut. So it goes up. So the, <laughs> that side is up, and then he comes down. The opposite side is down. And it's around the elbow to the liver. How devastating that could be. Able to slip that left hook by Butler moments ago. Remember, Butler fights orthodox, but is naturally left-handed. And he loves that left hook. Just haven't seen much of it against Inouye. It's risk-reward against the fighter with his power. Inouye's looking sharper than ever. You know, getting right to Butler with combinations. Butler's not giving him much to return. Every now and then in spots when Inouye will neglect defense, Butler will come on with his combinations. The hook is the best punch, I believe, that Butler has landed this far in this fight. You just saw it again with 10 seconds to go in round three as Butler threw that hook and Inouye finishes strong to the belt. End of three. Just a vicious assault right here. In a way, cornering Butler. Butler protecting himself really well. A lot of those things was caught on the glove. But as you see, no return fire from Butler. He is timid. He does not want to open himself up because he does not want to get knocked out. Again, against the longer ropes. In a way, trying to come around that high guard. Throwing straight shots down the middle, trying to split the guard of Butler. I think that right hand that split the guard right at the final second may be the most effective of the round right there. I put that a punctuation right there on that round. <laughs> round number four from Ariaki Arena in Tokyo. Undisputed Bantamweight World Championship fight. Three belts in the hands of Inoue right now. Butler has the WBO belt at 118 pounds. Well, it's round four, and Butler has lost every single round. He doesn't have the knockout power to hurt in a way. So at this point in the fight, he needs to make a choice. Needs to make an adjustment. He needs to fight. Sell out now. Sell out right now. Because the way this fight is going could be ending shortly, real shortly, Tess. And here, Joseph Gallagher calling out from the corner of Butler to have a bit of a swagger to you. In a way, finding that jab with ease. See if the right hand comes behind it. It's always interesting when we call fights from Japan how quiet the crowd is, even when they're watching their favorite superstar. Respectful, quiet, not that constant hum that we are used to like we had at Madison Square Garden on Saturday night for that card. And with that, you can often hear the corners, as is the case with Gallagher. Speaking to his charge, Paul Butler, 34 win WBO champion. And we closing the gap into that corner again. Left hook comes in. In a way, comes around the guard with a right hand. And even when these shots are being partially blocked by Butler, much is getting through to me. That's the There's first. a thud right through the glove that's, that's the first. making contact. Tess, you do from a power puncher like Inouye, when you're getting hit with those type of punches, the lights are flickering on and off in your head. Honestly, it hurts catching those shots. You need to get underneath those shots, weave underneath those shots, not take those shots on the gloves and on the arms. But that has been the case with Butler throughout these four rounds. The high guard 
and trying to block as you just saw right there with the left hand. It's weakening them, Tess. No doubt, that energy that in a way is generating in those punches, as long as it's touching something on the body of Butler, it's draining. Butler had the counter opportunity moments ago, in a way able to slip it. As he has been in control through four rounds, now you're in a way. Just more domination from anyway. Target practice at this moment. This is punch, punch and bag work right here. You know, Butler, I understand his strategy. He doesn't want to get knocked out. He took this fight. He said that, hey, I want to be the undisputed champion. But he's not fighting like that. He rather covers himself up. He'd rather be covered up, protect himself, and not dish out any offense. See how calm and relaxed in a way is currently number two pound for pound fighter in the world according to ESPN.com and in the corner of Paul Butler Adam Gigli Joseph Gallagher sending off their charge to your point of Butler and this opportunity he wins the belt back in April in a way does his thing against Donaire to get the third belt in a way was contemplating a move up and leaving this weight class but Butler's willingness to have an undisputed fight keeps him here at 118 pounds one last time. But Butler wanted this. He said the chance to unify against Inouye, I want that before anything else. Never a matter of saying yes or no, a matter of just when this fight would happen. And now that opportunity arrives at round number five. And does he have enough offense, enough willingness to try to keep the monster off him and change the course of this fight? See, down in a way is not attacking. He's looking for Butler. He's want Butler to commit because he wants to punch in between his punches. Butler's been on that back foot the whole time. He's been moving laterally and he's been covering up when he gets pinned with the high guard. Right hand to be coming soon from in a way. Combination from Butler is in a way just harmlessly steps back. Very consistent work from the jab of Inouye, as we told you. He is number two among all Bantamweights in jabs landed per round. He doubles the typical average of a 18-pounder. Anyway, Inouye is standing just outside that mid-range. He's, he's hoping that Butler commits with something. He's looking for that right hand over the top of the jab of Butler. There's the jab of Butler. Often comes with one foot out the back door, though. He's in a way waits on it. Let's see if he can bring that right hand over the top. Now Butler with his back against the ropes. There's a three punch combination from the Englishman. Yeah, he was able to land that because he got used. That's the right hand right there, Tess, I was talking about. Yep. He got used to the jab coming at the same speed in the single jab from Inouye. Butler right there doing a good job recognizing that and timing Inouye. Closes range with the jab, gets the inside left hand, came to the body, finished with the left hook upstairs. Right hand comes behind the jab. Left uppercut, right uppercut. There's that left hand to the body. It's been so effective tonight. End of five from Tokyo, and Paul Butler is in a deep hole.
Round number six. Naoya Inoue, the monster. A night that could be filled with history for him as he tries to become the first boxer from Asia to be a four belt undisputed world champion. And with that, and Timmy, we noted we're so used to in recent years seeing Inoue with the bright dyed blonde hair or mm. the frosted tips or the unique hair color tonight. He's going back literally to his original roots of the black hair, and he discussed that. He said, the last time... And now that's what he wants tonight, is to have it come full circle on a night when he tries to become an undisputed world champion. Tess Inouye is trying every, <laughs> every trick in the bag. He switched southpaw. I know I knew he can fight from the southpaw position. He hasn't done it that often in his fights, but he changed southpaw just for a little bit. Now he's posturing in front of Butler, trying to get him to open up. He does for a moment, and in a way would invite that, looking for an opportunity to land his power shot. Now a little bit of a shuffle before he sends off a three-punch combination. The reason why Butler's having a little success is, is because now anyway is taking more chances, trying to get him to open up so he can land that kill shot. Jab to the body. High guard from Butler tries to split it with a right hand. Butler comes forward behind the jab just for a moment. In a way, could use a more aggressive, more willing Butler to create his own opportunities. Double jab, right hand to the body from Inouye. Three punch combination from Inouye, and you can hear the thud. Tess Butler. I don't think he's here to win tonight. I think he's just here to survive. That's it. He's here to survive. He's not letting his hands go. He fears the punching power from Inouye. Look at Inouye. He's having fun. This is the undisputed championship of the world. And Inouye, is just, this is a sparring session for him. That's how gifted he is. He recognizes it easily. End of six, halfway through this undisputed world championship fight. Joe Tessitore and Tim Bradley on the call with you. Good morning. Breakfast with brutality, but we haven't seen enough of it so far as Butler not a willing challenger to create those opportunities from Inouye. So what's the answer if you're Inouye in dealing with this version of Butler? Tess is so difficult to deal with a fighter that is so defensively minded. You know, in a way, pulling out every trick in the bag, switching southpaw, going down to the body. You see him pinning Butler in the corner, landing kill shots over the top. He's not able to land that shot because Butler is so dang defensive. He has a tight guard, he stays compact. And he's not opening himself up to be hit or Is this hurt. something where you believe, in a way, starts to get frustrated or just embraces it, has fun with it, he, and he, opens up even more? He gets a little bit more, let's say, anxious. He will make a little bit more mistakes, make himself a little bit more vulnerable. But he wants, so that way he can open up Butler. It's a clean shutout, clean sweep, dominating form from in a way against Paul Butler. Winner here will be only the 11th undisputed four-belt champion in boxing history, the first undisputed bantamweight champion in the four-belt <laughs> era. What I tell you? Yep. What I tell you? Try to get him to open up, but Butler's not taking the bait. Hands down around the waist, <laughs> sitting right in the pocket. And anyway, he's going to be willing. He's going to have the willingness to get hit just a little bit more. 
playing somewhat a possum. So that way he can set up Butler with something effective. You know, we're leaning his head forward, hands down. He's looking for an opportunity. Begging Butler to throw and engage. Butler always, when he throws a combination, he leaves with his right, right hand, followed by the jab hand, and then another right hand. So he throws a 2-1-2. Two, two. I've been seeing that combination often. Punch combination from Minaway. Finishes with the left hand. Now lead right to the body. <laughs> Inouye is getting bored. Saying, he on. said, come on, man. Come on. Make a fight out of it. Yeah. <laughs> now raising the right hand. Pop jabbing off the hip. Winding up and flexing. It's too easy, Tess. Far too easy. Too easy. Good combination right there from and Butler. Ali shuffled. A duck out to the left. Double jab right hand. See, Butler has, in a way, right where he wanted to, to get him. Get him over anxious, frustrated. And taking more risks, but he's not letting his hands go. And there's no intention when he does. Even like the last combination he threw. The year was against Nonito Donaire. That all-time thriller when he fought through a broken nose and a broken orbital bone. Just some more punching bag work right here. Butler attempted to throw a short counter. Yeah, that right there is just seems like a boring fighter to me. Anyways, getting bored inside the ring. He's tried everything, pulled out all the tricks, still hasn't found a way to open up Butler and make him engage with him. Father Shingo is trainer. Eighth round, does the script change here? Beautiful left hook down to the body. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I need to see more from Butler right there. He saw that in a way was relaxing after his combination. And he finally came in behind with his own combination to land on the champion in a way. And we're just waiting on him, putting his head right out there. Right hand from in a way. Stop Ouch. Butler's lateral movement for a moment. A combination from Butler. It's just a touch more aggressive here in round eight. Ooh, both men opening up with right hands. Way leads to the body, then comes with the left hook upstairs. You can hear the encouragement from the corner of Paul Butler. 
casts. As he's sent back with another right hand that hits that high guard. Nice. Just more of the same, Tess. Butler will have some success when he lets his hands go. Catching anyway in spots where he's careless. And then he gets on his bike again. Look at this. Uh -oh. Hands behind the back. He hit him oh, with the Roy, Roy Jones. Jones. <laughs> then he comes forward. He hit him with the Roy. Got to do something. I mean, if Butler's not going to throw then, when are you going to throw? That's a fighter. What you're seeing is a fighter that's not being challenged. So he's being creative in there just to keep himself alive inside that ring. I like it, though. Why not? End of eight. Nice inside right there. Nice slip inside and getting around to the body of Butler. Butler still maintaining his form and still content with just blocking. But when he does decide to punch... He's pretty accurate with his shots. He catches Inouye when Inouye's at a low point. When he stops and in front of him, you know, get defensively careless and not allow himself to be hit, Tess. Nobody's going to know he was in a fight when you see his face tomorrow. Paul Butler being completely outclassed here. Tess, he's content. Arena. He's content, Tess. Butler is content with just going the distance. He can say, hey, I went the distance with anyway. That's it. Nothing more. And Wade comes out firing here in round nine. Now, anyway, he's looking to match the rhythm of Butler. You see him on a bounce, bouncing just like Butler. Match trying to match his rhythm. Trying a different way to open up Butler. Tess, I'll let you know right now, I'll be happy if I don't ever see Butler ever again. He's not even contending in this fight. I, I'm just flabbergasted. I don't even know what to say, honestly. Just just being extremely defensive, really not throwing any punches, not competing, just surviving. The way I hear you talk and what I see out of Butler, you get the sense that to him the victory was getting the contract signed. That's it. That's it. You, you got to understand that. It's his first time fighting out of his country. It's his first title defense. You know, most of the time, guys, they want to get a title defense and try to, you know, make a little, bit, you know, make a little bit money and have a, you know, a voluntary defense or, you know, but not just go straight to the top and then come in here and just lay an egg. And you hear the constant encouragement and really more endorsement from his trainer, Joseph Gallagher, in terms of the movement. Nice, good, good call, but Gallagher himself has to understand you're headed to a charade. 
These are not the right instructions. Well, he's following the game plan. The game plan is to be to don't take risks. And you can tell the game plan from the opening bell. And get in a way over anxious and make him pay for his mistakes. You're not making him pay at all, even if he was over anxious. There's no willingness to do that. Well, more of the same. One two combination right there, Lance from anyway. No response from Butler. Pretty much target practice. That land directly on the chin. I got to tell you, Butler does have a beard on him because that shot was deadly. Came right down the middle, right directly on the chin, and he took it well. Round number 10 from Tokyo. In a way with a body shot as Butler was up against the ropes. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. Anyway, need to come up with a quick combination up top to get those elbows inside and raised up to be able to land that shot to deliver. Double left hook would be awesome too. Touch high, go low. On the same side. Three punch combination that finishes with the left to the body. Good two piece right there from Butler. That time willing to throw and in a way filled that gap with a right hand. Now Butler going to the body and then wide swinging up top with a right hand. And away fires back with his straight right, looking to split the guard. Right hand from in away. It's a good sequence right here. Consistent work from Inouye. Inouye should just take some of the, the steam off the punches and change the cadence up, speed things up. What would that do for him, Timmy? He can open up a big shot. Touch, 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 touch. Get him defensive and then boom. A big shot downstairs. There's a good right hand and then the left finishing just underneath that right elbow of Paul Butler. He got him right where he want him now. He's softening him up more and more. Hit him with flush shots down to the body. Definitely picking up the pace here in round number 10. Went a few rounds trying to do anything. Wild antics just to try to get Butler to engage. Even went with the Roy Jones chicken pose in round number eight. But here just making his own offense of it. I always tell you guys, nice little pull right there. You see, anyway, reaching out with the left hand to pull the guard down to manipulate the guard and split the guard with the right hand. And there's some work from Butler coming back, anyway, sitting in the pocket trying to get him to open up, staying close enough so he can, but didn't anticipate that.
that combination coming from Butler. Championship rounds here for undisputed status at 118 pounds. In a ways, IBF, WBA, WBC titles on the line, Butler's WBO strap. It has been a clean sweep for Naoya Inoue here in Tokyo. 19th World Championship fight, 18-0 with 16 knockouts. But Butler has been taking on the attitude of trying to go the distance with the unified champ. Now in a way with a combination to open up this 11th round. Oh, and I love the speed on those punches. That's what I'm talking about. Changing up the cadence, baby. Speed coming down the middle, but now he needs to bring it downstairs after he get those hands high and raised on Butler. Attack that body. Right hand to the body is a good one. And a big right hand that comes in. Three one from that away. Big combination scores the knockdown here in round 11. That power that away comes through, and he gets it done at 11. Dismisses an unengaged Paul Butler by hitting the accelerator and putting on a show. Timmy, you said I love the speed and the power of these punches to open up this round, and it got to Butler. He did it again. Knockout victory for the monster. Tessa took some time.